Hello? Who did Cobra Commander 788? To what do I owe the honor? Would Jaren and I like to participate in Cobra Converge 6 this year? I can't think of anything we'd rather do. Well, there's only one catch. What's that? Don't focus on any of the awkward or bizarre years from the late end of the vintage line. Okay, well, no deal. <laughs> Welcome back to Anything Joe's, a collaborative journey through the world of G.I. Joe. My name is Greg Engel. And I'm Jaron Decker. And we'll be your host today. Today we've gone blue for Cobra Convergence 6. That's right, we've been officially invited this year to participate in Cobra Convergence. We couldn't be more excited. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into our topic. I let Jaron just pick the topic this year. And I should have known from the get-go that that would be a mistake. Because <laughs> Jaron has picked the villains of Star Brigade. So... Let's take a look at the 1993-1994 Star Brigade era and the two completely different type of villains that occupy it. First up from 1993, we've got Astro Viper V2. So this is just a straight repaint of the original Astro Viper, which was kind of like a atmospheric, low-terrain uh, trooper. They've decided to make him a high-terrain trooper, and they've launched him directly into space, with the only significant change being the extremely colorful outfit that he's wearing um jaron what's your thought on astro viper v2 graduating to space i absolutely love it i love this figure i this is one of those ones that if i see one i'm gonna buy it like if i see one in person uh i'm, I'm gonna just go ahead and grab it as long as it's not outrageous i love the colors love the teal with the green visor um hopefully eventually one day we'll get this in a classified scale um i think it you know it's it's got really cool flavors. You read like the file card. I think it's just a it's a really really well designed figure in my mind. Yeah, well, if you see one in person, and you can't miss it because it'll blind you from a mile away. <laughs> uh, the only thing about this color scheme that I think I mean I don't I don't think it's obnoxious, but I do think it's a step down from the Astro Viper V1. I do really like the helmet. I think if the color scheme was more in line with that helmet, I think this would be a better figure overall. I think it also is worth mentioning that they use this mold to make the uh, Shadow Viper, uh, which was like a 2001 post-vintage but still O-ring figure mold, I think that figure would probably have been a better fit for this. Um, I love that figure as well. I own yeah. all three of this mold, and I love them all. Well, somebody's got to buy them. Let's, <laughs> let's take a quick me, baby. Let's take a quick look at Astro Viper V2's file card, uh, so maybe we can get a better idea of how these guys graduated into the Space Academy. Uh, quick shout out to Carson Metaxas at 3D Joe's because we've essentially stolen all the images straight from his website. Why would we go anywhere else when it's the premier resource? And don't forget that Carson's book, uh, The Art of 3D Joe's Omnibus, is available for regular pre-orders now. So if you missed that on the Kickstarter, you decide you want to get another one, make sure you go check out his website because that book is going to be a must-have collectible. Astro Viper. Cobra, a Cobra Knot is the official title. Sorry, Astronaut's not good enough. Over here in Cobra Land, everything has got its own little its own little flair. The solar system is only big enough for one ruling power, Cobra. Among Cobra's vast array of specialized infantry troopers, the only ones qualified, besides Cobra Targats, for duty in the dangerous voids of space are the Astro Vipers. They are the only soldiers capable of withstanding repeated G-Force launchings and extensive tours of duty orbiting distant planets. They were recruited from the ranks of the Strato Vipers, who are naturally and artificially conditioned for high-altitude flying and G-Force maneuvering. Cobra Commander knew he could count on these Vipers not only because of their specialized training and abilities, but also because they are exceptionally ruthless in battle. Before I get into the weeds with that, um, these later file cards have almost like a little blueprint to the side and it it highlights some key attributes of the figure uh, or its accessories and in the case of the astro viper we can see that he has a anti-implosion g-force resistant spacesuit 
the Astro Viper helmet with face shield, a hip mounted high impact leg brace, steel plated gravity boots, the satellite repair technician's bandolier. I guess that's like a <laughs> utility belt. I don't yep. know what else. Okay. Let's go with that. Cobra laser rifle with infrared scope, razor sharp serrated battle knife, and missile launching Astro Smasher gun, which is, of course, just a nice way of saying missile launcher. Let's take a look at the other side of the coin with villains of the Star Brigade uh, with the aliens. So there's only a small set of these aliens that came out at the very end of this line with some other unproduced stuff and some later release stuff that we saw. But we're just going to focus on the stuff that actually got a full-on retail release. And the first one that we come up with here is 1994's Carcass, Alien Destroyer. Carcass, parentheses, Alien Destroyer. Carcass is probably my least favorite of the three aliens. He his gimmick is the worst. He's basically just a stretch <laughs> Armstrong that do, that doesn't stretch or have strong arms. <laughs> um, on top of that, he has uh, such an unusual weapons and accessory set. He actually specifically has a gun that doesn't even fit in his hand because his hand has the like hole drilled through it. So you just have to pop the handle in there. Can't do that with that high-tech laser gun it doesn't have an opening like that so pretty well thought out <laughs> um what's your what's give me your gut take on this guy i really like i feel like you've trained me in the wrong way where i'm like i like everything so like <laughs> i uh i i really i think this guy's cool now granted i think he's the my least favorite of the three um but with that being said He's still a freaking cool little, like, unique design that I really enjoy. And one day we'll own if I can find one. But for some reason, people don't stock these highly sought-after figures. <laughs> By far the the best character with a weak figure versus awesome card art. Uh, the card art for this figure, I think, looks amazing. It, and isn't reflected in that figure at all. It has a weird like guts system that opens up and there's supposed to be some like gooey stuff inside there or something, I guess I've actually never messed with that figure. I mean, I own this figure, but I I am pretty, he's pretty unappealing to me. (laughs) So, uh, let's take a look at the file card for carcass and see what we can learn about this mysterious alien destroyer. Codename carcass alien destroyer. That's an unusual codename. You would think that would be his legal name. (laughs) <laughs> birthplace quadrant four planet mertonia primary military specialty mercenary hu- mercenary hunter secondary military specialty planetary slash alien destruction you think you would lead with that or perhaps maybe not have a military specialty if you're an alien i also find it weird that alien destruction is his specialty but for us, he is the alien. But I guess for him, we are the aliens. Maybe that means killing humans. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just, it's just, it strikes me as weird when they're like, he's the alien hunter. And I'm like, uh-huh. well, but we're the, the aliens. Alien. You blew it up. <laughs> Leaving nothing but broken bones and smashed dwellings in his wake, Carcass is a born menace to the universe. He has stomped through alien towns, destroying all that he can and making prisoners of its fearful inhabitants. He has even gone so far as to mistakenly attack a Star Brigade outpost, narrowly escaping capture by ducking into an asteroid belt. His mutated body, which may account for his overly hostile attitude, is considered <laughs> ugly even to other lunatics aliens more hideous than he. Well, that's rude, but okay. <laughs> that's, that, look, body shaming is not okay, <laughs> even to this guy, all right? So the blueprint section on this guy is also pretty rude. Mutated claw ribs boneless alien arms and razor sharp teeth that's all he's got no they're not gonna highlight anything else that's going on with him he's got a crazy design the artwork really is like looks like he has like a crab type shell just on his legs and maybe his back and then his arms are like they look like they have like follicles of hair or something coming off of them and but his hands are insane his hands look like a puppet show gone wrong basically he's like <laughs> i got me caca um you know it's weird to me that he has boneless arms but then there's like the claws sticking out to me i always thought those were like bony claws but I yeah guess it does look weird not. on the art yeah you're right it does look more like claws on his on the figure it almost looks like his rib cage i would think or something 
I like yeah. that. So it's like his insides are out. <laughs> I would love to see someone with way more talent than I do repaint this guy and really add like a realistic look to him, even just with this mold. Because like those mutated rib claws, I think would look really cool if you actually like accentuated the claws and that kind of thing. Worth mentioning that the Mexican variant for this figure uh, is black instead of orange and does look much, much, much cooler as a result. Um, even though it's not reflected on the card art anywhere else, that's just an international like pressing variant um, and not the only one we'll see today. Uh, but I do think it's a, it's an improvement. I think it's better than the original. Okay. So that's Carcass. He's a weirdo. Don't still don't really have a clear understanding of how he is supposed to fit into the universe. He messes with Star Brigade, but that was an accident. So he kind of the file card has got a real strong like Lobo vibes. I think is kind of something that's coming out there. I guess they run into the Joes like run into him doing other destructive stuff and and fight with him there. Um, I don't know, but there he is. All right, the, let's go. It, that is him. Let's get back to the uh, air quotes Cobra normal normal Cobra side of things <laughs> with the Cobra Bat. That's the B A A T, not the regular Bat. 1993's Cobra Bat, Battle Armored Android Trooper. Um, some people would list this as V3 if you consider it to be part of the regular Bat. Some people would say this is a new V1 because his name has a different spelling in it. I say let's forget this figure altogether because it looks like crap. <laughs> so this is the first, well, the first that we are encountering of several figures in this line that are in uh, very awkward uh, robotic shells, basically. They are losing a lot of articulation. They are, no, you can't take them apart like regular Joes or, and like Ninja Force figures. They're just, they are what they are, so don't break them or do and then forget that you ever bought them. Um, so... The Cobra Bat is a great idea, obviously. If you're thinking about space combat, you, uh, I immediately am like, well, you would want some kind of like drone or cybernetic trooper that kind of do your work for you that can survive the vacuum of space. Um, unfortunately, they went a little overboard in the design, and I think that, uh, honestly, a, a repaint of the V2 Bat, I think, would have been a much stronger decision and certainly probably would be reflected on better, even if you painted it to look like crap. I mean, if they... If they gave it this black and white paint scheme, I think it would look it would have looked great. Anyway, regardless, we got this guy, and it's. Let's take a look at his file card and see if I can learn why they messed him up so much. <laughs> Battle Android Trooper, uh, sorry, Battle Armored Android Trooper. Take a bulldozer, strap a few missile launchers and assault rifles to it, and you've got yourself a bat. Bats. The original Battle Android Troopers were totally artificial robotic troopers with primitive logic circuits. They could absorb enormous amounts of battle damage and still continue their missions as long as their trigger finger circuits were intact. Now the new bats have been redesigned with less intelligence than before because their circuits have been modified for weapons and assault capabilities only. Battle destruction and elimination of G.I. Joe forces were the only orders programmed into the circuitry of these walking space tanks. The bats are so brainless and trigger happy that they can become confused during space battles and fire at anything that moves, including other bats. <laughs> so, just to be clear, the original bats, which also have verbiage in their file cards that, hey, these guys will shoot anything that's in front of them. They're not very smart. You took those guys made them even stupider and then put them into space where they'll shoot at literally anything that they encounter. Doesn't sound like the best business model for not getting your own ass blown up in space where literally everything <laughs> is, could ruin your journey. Um, I, I think that's a little ridiculous, but uh, so the concept is we made them so much stronger and so much beefier that we had to make them stupider because there just wasn't enough room. Despite the fact that this bat is probably close to twice the size of the other physical bat figure we've had. Um, the, okay. Okay. Well, all that aside, I do think the Cobra bat's a good idea. I think the paint scheme on this is again, is a solid idea. I just think the body mold is, is a joke. Uh, let's hear it there. Uh, savior of the forgotten figures what do you think about this guy um i mean i can't this is one area where i can't fully defend i mean these <laughs> figures are just strange um i will say the the color scheme is absolutely phenomenal i would love to see any other version any other body mold of a bat i don't care any other one would be amazing with this colorway 
Um, I do think that th- reading the file card makes me think that you should basically not even let them move. You just strap them in stationary and point them in the direction you want them to shoot and hope that they don't somehow turn around and shoot you while they're at it. Just put them in a torpedo tube and shoot them straight at them <laughs> and hope that they just explode into your ship. That seems to be as good a plan as anything else you guys have got. Yeah, might as well. All right, so let's. we're going to flip that coin back over again. We're going to talk about not an alien, I don't think. But uh, something in But we in don't that. know. We don't, really. I don't know, that's for sure. All right, 1994 Cobra Black Star, an elite space pilot. So the Cobra Black Star uh, obviously is listed <clears throat> as a space pilot, and you can see that uh, his card art has got a lot of coloring variation compared to the actual figure itself. Um, as a matter of fact, when I look at the card art, it really, really screams man-at-arms from Masters of the Universe. There's That paint scheme is, like, really friendly with that with the man at arms design and might account for why might account for why it changed so much from this to to the actual uh, full-on design i think the cobra black star is actually a really good figure i think his accessories are horrible and are not even put worth putting together but the figure itself <laughs> compared to other stuff in this line it's fairly toned down it looks i mean like the mold itself is good and, and it doesn't have a lot of um unnecessary stuff going on recently uh as recently as this week um i will talk about carson again because he's been showing some stuff that's for the upcoming blu-ray that goes with that omnibus they recently had a conversation with ron rudat uh where they ron wasn't even aware that he had done the design for this character and he had done it so early on that um basically it came to fruition in 94 and he had no idea that he had... So he's actually designed characters from the start of the line to the end of the line. And Cobra Black Star is that bridge that kind of helps him. He's, he was there off and on through the whole thing, essentially. Um, so, and that probably explains why this figure is designed so well. Because Ron is such an exceptional figure designer. Let's take a look at the file card and see if we can understand a little bit more about the motivations of Cobra Black Star. File name unknown primary cobra <laughs> it doesn't say military specialty it says primary cobra specialty i've never seen that before or noticed it <laughs> so to be clear the aliens have military specialties but the bad guys just like the cobra knots <laughs> transcend it primary cobra specialty elite space pilot secondary cobra specialty tactical squad leader Cobra Commander has formed an alliance with the Black Star Forces a secretive legion of space pilots whose origins remain unknown this particular Cobra Black Star is the best pilot out of all of the Black Star ranks. He, like all Black Stars, behaves as, behaves as if space was his natural habitat. They have incredible agility in zero gravity zones, climb planetary craters with ease, and instinctively avoid asteroid belts while engaged in stellar dogfights. No one has ever seen a Black Star up close, and rumors have spread throughout the galaxy that they might not even be human. This figure probably has more stuff to unpack than almost any other figure here because it is a figure we know nothing about, but they are actually giving us a lot of threads to pull at in the file card, which I commend them for. So this is what we know, uh, essentially. There are several Cobra Black Stars, and they are, and they are essentially are pilots. And they are a separate entity from Cobra because Cobra Commander contracted them, much like a bounty hunter or a mercenary. We don't know what's underneath that helmet, so it's at the uh, player's discretion to kind of, you know, you've got a lot, some options there. You can make him an alien if you want to lean into the zaniness of this line, or just make him a regular human. Or, you know, maybe they're an entire military elite that, you know, we don't know anything about. This, char- this character, has a, they give you a little bit to play with, but they also expect you to fill in the blanks. I think it's a good compromise between the two things. Um... Interestingly enough, even though there's an entire squadron of Cobra Black Stars, they make a point to specify this Black Star specifically is the figure that you have because he's so good at his job. So it is unusual that they don't give this guy a different code name uh, to distinguish him from the other Black Stars. So you could troop build these and say, hey, they're all Black Stars. Or you can say, hey, this guy is the one best one, he, and his name is Black Star. Not something that I had thought about. I don't. I haven't done a lot of research into these figures for what I assume are obvious reasons. So I have always <laughs> kind of thought of Black Star as a unique individual that works for Cobra. 
Um, what do you? Sorry, I've been talking a lot about him. What do you think about Cobra Black Star? I love the design of this figure. Um, I feel like they almost went into like a homage to Snake Eyes. Like, hey, let's not give him info. Let's everything's not known. Um, and I think that to me, it it kind of achieves that same effect. Where I'm like, oh, I want to know more. Like, I want to know. It's almost uh, Black Star's making me think of like Top Gun. Um, I know the timing <laughs> is off on that, but it's like, you know, everybody, there's some uh, space pilot school where everybody's competing to be the Black Star. Um, <laughs> but I think it's cool, you know, they mentioned that he's the best. I think that's really cool. Like you mentioned, you can army build these. Um, I would love to like get a custom of just like a slightly better version of, of the Black Star, and then you could army build and have like the one main guy. Um, maybe just give him like a top hat showing he's better than everybody else but yeah um, I, it's a great figure i love I'd the li- colors i'd like to see a custom head of this or maybe like a removable helmet so you could make him that would be cool a little bit more unique definitely one of my highlights of of the of these 10 figures this is one of my favorites hey um, just go ahead and give us this unclassified <laughs> i don't care about shipwreck i don't care about grunt or any of the other original 13 just fast track Black Star. <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. We don't want to put any bad ideas in anybody's head. <laughs> you can reach Jaron on Instagram at anything Joe's Pod. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one in the list. 1994's Cobra Commander, Cobra Supreme Leader. This is a V7. This Cobra Commander is, you know, in a series of pretty outrageous Cobra Commander designs. This one is right up there as a strong contender. And uh, before I get into this... Uh, insane accessory that he comes with i'm going to just focus on the figure for a minute so cobra they put him in a spacesuit they made a spacesuit for him they gave him a helmet they gave him a wild accessory but they there's an un essentially an unmasked version of cobra commander with the exception of the the cobra commander with the red face plate that you could like pry off to see his cold dead eyes this is the closest figure we've ever seen that actually is supposed to be an unmasked cobra commander and you can, like, throw that out the window just because you're saying, oh, it's Star Brigade, it doesn't count. And I, I would respect that, frankly. But it's still an interesting <laughs> note to say, hey, from the nose up, this is Cobra Commander's true face of the toy line. Um, having said that, and I don't like that, I don't like seeing this much of his face. Um, I think it would have been better to have him have, like, a, a full mask on underneath or modify the helmet so it's a permanent thing. Uh, which is something I'm usually very opposed to. But in this case, Cobra Commander's face is like looking at the Ark of the Covenant. It's supposed to be like a sacred thing. We're not really supposed to know what he looks like. I mean, I know there have been instances in the past where we've seen him like in disguise or we've seen you know some hints as to what it looks like, but it's not really my bag, to be perfectly frank. Um, I do think that the design of the suit, however, is pretty good. They could have put him in a big old robo suit, and that would have been an instant fail in my opinion. But I think this suit is okay. He's got good, like, Cobra colors, but they didn't just go straight into that navy blue. He's basically got, like, two different two-tone blue. I know this is, like, teeter, not purple on the torso, but... And then it's highlighted with black. Anyway, what I'm getting at is color scheme is pretty sharp, and the, the spacesuit design itself is pretty good. If they had named this guy the Astro Viper instead, I probably would really, really like this figure. The fact that it's Cobra Commander is what's really off-putting to me. Um, so... Let's take a look at his file card and see if we can understand why in the world Cobra Commander would go into space to begin with. Cobra Commander, Cobra's Supreme Leader. File name's classified, birthplace classified, grade, Cobra Supreme Leader. This is a topic for a separate discussion, but I would like to know if Supreme Leader is actually what the title of Cobra... Com- I mean, normally you would think Leader of Cobra or Cobra Commander is the title, so it's interesting to see the term Supreme Leader used in this way. Supreme Commander of the Cobra Legions, Cobra Commander is the ultimate enemy of G.I. Joe. Although no one knows his true identity, now we've seen him from the nose up. No, just kidding. It's common <laughs> knowledge that he's the most diabolical villain imaginable. Because he has failed so far in his plans to take over the Earth, thanks, of course, to the courage, skill, and firepower of G.I. Joe forces, Cobra Commander is heading into space to set up battle stations on the moon and strengthen his troops. G.I. Joe's Star Brigade must stop him before he gains power or risks destruction of Earth, space, and the entire human race. I'm not sure that tracks if you have, if you've, if you're nothing but failing on Earth, 
going to the moon maybe isn't the next most logical step unless you're Elon <laughs> Musk. Um, the idea that he was somehow going to be a threat from the moon uh, is a little far-fetched uh, at, at best. And there's not a lot of solid reasoning for why Cobra Commander are going to space. Other than the time that Fred Seven did it, uh, you don't, it doesn't seem like the kind of thing that Cobra Commander would like delegate himself an assignment to. A little too dangerous, maybe, for Cobra Commander. Um, something that he would send, like Destro or you know one of his other lackeys, to do for him. So this is not a figure that makes is I don't think has a lot of practical applications, um, which is a shame because, like I said before, I do think the design of it is pretty solid. The file card on this and the card art also they took the purple out and he's basically blue all over. Something that I wouldn't have. You know, I would like to have seen that. I think that probably would have it almost, it really does make it look significantly more like a space suit when it's all one cohesive color like this. And then he has like silver on his arms and they've kind of changed that to black. It's obvious in a lot of these that the character designs I think are uh, much better than the, what the actual figure turned out to be. They made a lot of little changes like this that I think are worth step in the wrong direction. There's even a uh, design sheet for this on 3D Joe's that shows how, you know how they how they wanted this the suit to be designed and how all the little cuts that are in it that have detailing in it um where the head was coming from pretty interesting stuff um but still interesting stuff on a figure that is essentially a, a hard sell to use in your you know when you're playing the three things they point out on his file card are his power lock helmet enclosure which seems like something that maybe everybody should get <laughs> Hey, listen, as supreme leader to get yeah, the power right. lock. Listen, Astro Viper, I really need you to do your job very well. And also, I just wanted to let you know that there has been a recall on your car. And if you could just bring it into your local Mazda dealer, we can get that <laughs> helmet and closure fixed. No problem. Uh, he has a climbing assault harness. I don't really know enough about space to know if climbing is the correct terminology when you could just float everywhere. And he has a space snake combat suit, which I guess is explains why that they have those ridges or like veins or whatever on his suit is it's supposed to be like a snake skin, which I actually think is pretty cool. Doesn't quite relay that in the figure, but um, I still think it looks good. Um, Jared, what's your, before I talk about this suction cup thing, what's your thoughts on old CC? I hear everything that you've said, all of the, uh, the not, not major complaints, but minor, minor things. Uh huh. Um, and I don't care at all. I love this figure. <laughs> this is one of my favorite figures. I, I just, I don't know. Something about it really hit me. This is this is a figure that I have actually bought but never received from eBay. And it hurt me so bad. Oh, um, man. I bought a complete one and was so excited to get the, the crazy accessory that, that you're about to talk about. Um, what you, will you tell me a little bit about this accessory since you love it so much? I don't really understand what the purpose of it is. It, I was just going to try to make it ride down my window as many times as I could. It looks like um, it's described as the Cobra Space Crawler. So it's a climbing harness attached to suction cup wheels, which, enab which enabled him to travel along the underbelly of smooth surfaces. That's a direct quote from 3D Joe's. Um, if you understand space, please leave me a comment in the section in the comment section of this video and tell me how do section cups how would section cups work in space do they will they grab on would they move properly do they use them in space can Maybe i design it's supposed to be like a more of like a sci-fi version they just don't, they only had suction cups well i mean i get that right where we gi joe was always one foot in the door and one foot in literal outer space so I, I mean, Except I get in this one because this one is both feet in outer space. This is in suction cups yeah. in outer space. I would be afraid that your suction cup would grab onto your helmet and rip it off. Maybe that's why it has a lock on it, <laughs> so you're not like power lock. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway, and that's enough time talking about this. Uh, I have conflicting Beautiful feelings figure. about this. I mean, it's it's there are worse figures in this line for sure, and he's not a robo guy, so uh, points for that. Just he's just unusual, but I I do like him. All right, next up, 1993 Destro Cobra Tech Commander. This is Destro V4. And speaking of guys that shouldn't have got robo suits, here he is. <laughs> Destro <laughs> is, 
looks rough, right? Okay, so he's got a red and gray color scheme. They've replaced his entire arm with a missile launcher, which is something I've never seen before. I don't know. I'm assuming the idea is that his arm fits into that and fires it from within, not that he lost his arm and had it replaced with a missile launcher. Because I have seen Edward Scissorhands, and it doesn't work out great. <laughs> um, I... The thing I have the most issue with is such a dumb thing to bring up, but it really bothers me that Destro, who has like this extremely fancy helmet that we've seen do any number of things. He's target target sensing. He makes video telephone call. I mean, it's basically like an Iron Man helmet, right? It does everything that you can imagine. The one thing it doesn't do is supply oxygen, I guess. So he has to, he was wearing his helmet and then he has another helmet over top of his helmet. Two points to that. One, design your figure and incorporate Destro's awesome face mask into the oxygen breathing apparatus. Number two, if you're going to go really brave, like with Cobra Commander, give me an unmasked Destro. He probably doesn't need to wear his mask. Into, I mean, I get that it's like a secret identity, even though we've all seen him without his mask. We all know his real name. But it, that's one thing that I do think would make this figure... Um, really really exceptional would have been to have just like an unmasked james mccullen head i would have bought well, it simply to have that head mold really exceptional except for the rest of it the head would have been exceptional <laughs> yeah uh, so let's take a look at the file card for this destro and see if he can redeem himself a little bit destro cobra tech commander file name james mccullen destro primary specialty cyber tech weapons dealer secondary specialty Weapons Manufacturing and Supply, Birthplace, Calendar, Scotland. Someday the earth will bow at my feet and I'll drop kick it like a football. That's a horrible Destro impersonation. And you know what? It's appropriate for a horrible Destro quote. You think Destro plays a lot of football? You think this guy from Scotland is big enough football? <laughs> from his new armor-plated space fortress guarded by Cobra Bats, Destro builds and pedals his galactic instruments of destruction. Destro has always been G.I. Joe's worst enemy, next to Cobra Commander, of course. But now that he sells his own robotic battle armor spacesuits made from designs he stole during a raid on a G.I. Joe science lab, he's more dangerous than ever. The G.I. Joe scientist who, de who developed the plans was nearly destroyed during Destro's raid, but was brought back to life as Robo Joe. The dark and desolate dangers of space create a mysterious battlefield where only the strongest and bravest survive. So Destro's days are surely numbered. I gotta give him pretty good points for this file card. I have some issues with it that I'm gonna dive right into, but this is there's a lot of like story concepts in a file card, which uh, as both as a child and as an adult is what I was looking for. You've only got a paragraph. Give me a couple of things to like feed me, so when I go and play with them, I got an idea of what's going on. So, bullet point number one: the implication is that Destro is selling robotic battle armor spacesuits. Uh, made from designs he stole during G.I. Joe. Actually, these are two bullet points in one. First of all, so, Destro, you mean to tell me that you are... You're the person that's responsible for these crappy spacesuits that all these <laughs> figures are wearing. Two, Destro, a known weapons dealer that essentially develops almost every advancement in technology that we see in the G.I. Joe universe, stole these plans from a G.I. Joe scientist and then failed to execute him properly so he could come back like Robocop. I, I, I don't like that. I think that blemishes the character of Destro. I'm not saying Destro is beneath stealing advancements in technology, but I like Destro when he's portrayed as his own dude. He's like forward thinking. He's got his own concepts, doing his own thing, blazing his own trail. Um, I do The part of that I do like is that it leads into the mythology of RoboJo, another crazy, stupid concept that luckily we don't have to talk about today. Um, but, but that day's coming, baby. <laughs> uh, maybe for uh, maybe when they start a GI Joe convergence, we can do a special on him. So uh, those two, those things, are, I think, are a little off-putting to me. I don't like the, kind of the way that sells the character of Destro. Um, eh, I don't know. It, it it misses on a, in a lot of levels. I think the figure design could have been great, and instead they put him in this thing. But I'm sure Jaren feels differently. So. Let's hear it, nope. Robo Jaren. I, I don't. Robo, Robo Joren. 
<laughs> um, I think a big thing you, that we we glossed over on that file card is he has a an armor plated space fortress, but he uses the BAATs to guard it. That's just that doesn't seem like very <laughs> sound logic. Whatever you do, make sure they don't turn around. They'll kill anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, it's not. I just if I wanted to play with something that was chunky that no one loved and was five points of articulation, basically, I would go play with more power of the force. Yeah, Star Wars burn. <laughs> <laughs> Which I do, so I guess that's what I dig it myself, too. So, <laughs> All right, so let's keep moving. We've got two back-to-back aliens, and it's definitely an improvement from Carcass. 1994's Lobotomax Stellar Explorer. Ooh, not just a murderer. <laughs> so, why are they so nice to Lobotomax, but I absolutely <laughs> drug Carcass's name through the mud? In the evolution of our three aliens that we have to talk about, we are essentially doing them in my personal order from least favorite to most favorite. And I think Lobotomax is a step in the right direction. It's cool because all the aliens have a gimmick, right? And they're some of the gimmicks, it's hit or miss, right? Some gimmicks I don't think are very good. Carcass's stretchy arms. Good idea, poor execution. Um, and then, so Lobotomax is kind of the mid range. Lobotomax has got a tail that can hold a weapon, which I think is cool. And it has some posability with the likes, the, I don't know what they call the bendy parts of this era, but you could just like kind of pose it within. Nightcrawler's old Toy Biz tail suddenly popped into my brain because it had the same, it has like little dots in the plastic and you can pose it. What's those, the, they make those little fuzzy wires that you would use as uh, kids. Pipe, yep. cl- pipe cleaners. Pipe cleaners. It's like a pipe cleaner is what it makes me think of. It would stretch into a position and hold pretty easily. I think that gimmick is actually pretty pretty cool. It doesn't work great because the tail, like, for the tail to aim forward, you have to really manipulate it in a kind of a serious manner. But I, I like the idea, and the look of this guy is, is pretty great. They gave him a crazy long neck, and then with a head on top, he's got, like, big, like, uh, pod like feet. I don't know why I'm doing the like live long and prosper symbol, but he's got like weird, <laughs> kind of like weird. He'd live a super weird footprint. He's geared up well. He's, you know, he's got a pretty kind of like lime green skin color, which is like pretty perfect alien vibe. Uh, and then he's got like a little, just like a little torso. I'm just not realizing he doesn't wear pants. Um, that could be a problem. That's problematic, but, bud. Yeah. <laughs> Um, maybe throw some, yeah. I mean, I don't know why you're Even covering a your shirt. Cloth. I guess they, they probably were like, how are we going to get that tail out? But I'm sure they could have figured something out. I'm just, I mean, anyway, I don't want to, I'm not going to fix it that on too much because it will make our comment section very unusual. Very strange. Let's take a look at the file card and see if we can understand what exactly Lobotomax explores. Codename Lobotomax, Stellar Explorer, birthplace, Morris, Sector 5, Planet Zog. Primary military specialty, he's a bounty hunter. A lot of that going around. Secondary military specialty, Alien Annihilator. They're giving him some pretty unofficial specialties, like Alien Destroyer of Worlds. <laughs> just say, you just say we, we get it, he's a mercenary. A friend to no one. Bummer. Lobotomax hates humanoids and fellow lunatics, aliens alike. Proud of his bounty hunter reputation, he is known throughout the cosmos as one of the most unmerciful creatures ever hatched. His monstrous tail can disable enemies in one powerful whack. Seldom does prey escape a bite from his venomous fangs. Unfortunately for him, his intelligence is extremely limited (laughs) due to the loss of brain tissue suffered when the top of his skull was sliced off during a laser battle duel with Predacon. Whew. That's pretty hardcore. Um, I wonder if that's what you're supposed to be looking at when you see the top of his head. It looks like Brussels sprouts or something. Is that supposed to be his like brain? If so, they should have definitely painted that pink because, or I don't know, a different color. I don't know what color alien brains are, but by making it green, you kind of lose a little bit of the like the that detail gets lost. Is basically what I'm getting at. The file cards always have little secrets like that to, to take or leave. But as in dissecting that, I'm thinking, oh, I wonder if that's actually supposed to be his brain that's there. Um, pretty cool that he's antisocial. I can relate to that. I also hate most humanoids <laughs> and fellow aliens. Um, but is another mark. One thing I do like about this, you know, the file card gives us a little tidbits like normal, but I do like that it puts in pretty black and white text that 
he doesn't get along with Predacon, the other mercenary that we're getting ready to look at. So if you're utilizing them in your own world, you've immediately got like two Boba Fett type characters that could clash with each other. And just like you, you know, every time the October Guard shows up, anytime a third faction is involved or the coil, just anybody, I think it makes storytelling a lot more interesting because there's so much more dynamics going on and being pretty defensive of this guy, considering he's only my mid range character, but I like a little bottom max. I think he has a lot of potential. And in terms of the absurd, this is a little bit more of the stuff that I do lean into. I am, don't consider myself to be a very negative G.I. Joe enthusiast. I like a lot of stuff. And I have a reputation as being a bit of a forgiver of the really dumb stuff. So I'm trying to balance that. I do like the dumb stuff. This is the type of dumb stuff that I like. Jaron, what's your take on Lobotomax? I, I really enjoy Lobotomax. And I think we, we have the same rating. This guy is one that I'm like, oh, he's really cool, but he's just not the best. Um, and, you know, the more we talk about him, the more I think that the next live action movie really should just be Star Brigade. Well, what have they got to lose, right? They've, <laughs> they've, it's, they've been so successful so far. Why don't you throw something different at them? Lobotomax is a little blueprint part of the card. It only has three things, and they're basically just poking fun at him. Look at this powerful terror tale. He's got bulging eyeballs. Who? <laughs> That's not a perk. Uh, you're just being mean. It, and a bounty hunter battle suit. That's right. The special pantsless battle suit for bounty hunters. It really helps you get around faster is what I hear. Um, okay. Enough of this guy. Let's move on to the other bounty hunter from 1994. Predacon is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> Predacon is by far my favorite. As a kid, I often thought about the concept of having a character that had four arms. They made a Goro in the Mortal Kombat figure, and I remember being uh, pretty amazed by that. And so Predacon's gimmick is essentially, hey, he's got four arms, everybody, and guess what? It rules. It's awesome. It's a great manipulation of a vintage mold, and it doesn't set anything apart. It's still a regular O-ring vintage figure. They managed to find a way to like actually put two more arms in and make them work properly. And I love it. I love it. It makes him, it, de it distinguishes him as an alien right away. Doesn't take away from any of his play features. Le even less so than the other guys because the tail is bendy and weird. Carcass can't use his arms right. Can't even hold his guns. Predacon functions like a perfectly normal G.I. Joe figure should. On top of that, he looks great. Um, he's got like a Dark blue jacket, light blue skin, white pants, gold bracers, and he's holding, like, the card art for this, he's got two guns in his top arms, and then his bottom arm, he's holding, like, a machine gun, like, bracing it, which I think is a real cool look. He's got, like, I don't know if those are supposed to be tentacles or um, dreadlocks, but he's got some kind of, like, hair thing going on that I don't quite understand. Every time I look at Predacon, he, um, it makes me think of another alien race that's in fiction but i can't place it at this time there's he just like there's a lot of familiar characteristics to this i'm like he also kind of has a lobo vibe but he also has the vibe of those like weird stretchy aliens from men in black that serve the coffee um <laughs> let's take a look at predacon's file card and see if we can get a little more understanding on why he's got such a beef with the little bags predacon alien bounty hunter birthplace the badlands planet trillium Primary military specialty, alien tracking. Secondary military specialty, arm wrestler. Yes, that's funny <laughs> and it's cool. <laughs> a, vicious, <laughs> a vicious lunatics alien, Predacon makes his living by capturing criminals and selling them back to the galactic authorities. If the authorities reject the criminals, Predacon imprisons them in his private alien zoo. This four-armed monster is loyal only to his tribal clan on, on planet Trillium. And he's proud to wear its ancestral medallion on his chest plate, along with lunatics hieroglyphics that are etched into his arm guards. Man, where do I start with that? Okay, so he keeps bounties that go south in his like personal like collector house. Was that the name of the guy from Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, the collector yeah. that had just like keeps all the specimens. Um, and he, um has a bunch of like tr not tribal stuff but like the hier the hieroglyphics and stuff suggests more of like a clan mentality from this alien race and the other thing i really want to talk about is that this is the first time i've heard them mention galactic authorities which is in all caps like not all caps but it's like proper names or proper nouns which implies that i mean it's not trademarked here but 
uh, that sets forward a new set of ideas that is that there's obviously some kind of galactic military or police force that enforces, you know, like Star Trek world. They Somebody's upholding the law out in space, and it's probably not G.I. Joe. I would be interested in seeing if there were any, even just workshop talk about fleshing out who are the galactic authorities in the G.I. Joe universe. But we didn't get that. But we did get this great arm wrestler. Um, Predacon's uh, blueprint descript- descriptions are four powerful quad arms, no duh there, these ancestral alien medallion, and the hieroglyphic arm guards. They didn't tell me what's going on with his hair, so I am going to assume it's dreadlocks. If it was like Medusa snakes, I'm pretty sure they would have pointed that out over his forearms. Jared, I... Uh, you don't have to sell me on this guy. What do you think about Predacon? God, I love this figure. And I think it's great that they didn't talk crap. Like, even the designers were like, nah, this is the coolest of the aliens. Because they didn't talk crap about bulging eyes or mutated rib claws or anything like that. He was just like, yeah, he's got four powerful quad arms. He's got four forearms. And <laughs> um, I, this is... This is the top figure on my want list. I want this, and then also I want the um, the one that was released in Mexico, the red one. I think those are just, they're such cool figures. The molds are awesome. It is the most unique figure, in my opinion, that is still very much a Joe. You can look at the pieces and make, yeah, that's a Joe. Yeah, we jumped over Lobotomax's Mexican variant because it's so similar. He's got like a lime green skin in the U.S. He's got yellow skin in Mexico. Doesn't really look significantly different at all. But Predacon, on the other hand, Predacon has a pretty significantly different paint scheme. He's got like, he's wearing black on the suit. His skin is red. His uh, dreadlocks are like a grayish color. It looks very, very good. Do I think it looks better than this one? I think it's a tie. I think they both look pretty great in their own way. I would love to have that Mexican variant, but as we know from our regular show, international variants is a pretty deep rabbit hole. It could cost a whole lot of money. And I'm just happy to have this regular guy in my collection uh, because I think he's so good. Maybe maybe my favorite figure from 1994. I would put him over lots and lots of other regular Joes and Cobras that came out this year. He's just such a great figure. you got to embrace a little bit of the craziness, and this is the way that I think it's done correctly. It just... He's just a badass. He looks awesome. You can do anything you want with him. Um, <clears throat> all right, so that concludes the alien portion of it. Let's get back to the, our last two Cobra guys. 1993's Targat, the Trans Atmospheric Rapid Global Assault Trooper V2. This Targat is essentially the exact same as Targat V1, except much like the Astro Viper, he is also graduated into the Space Police or the Galactic Authorities. Well, no, I guess not that. The Cobra Knots. I don't know. There's too many terms going on here. Uh, the target is basically the exact same thing, except they did another, I think what is another pretty big misstep is they took his rocket pack off. Something that basically required no modification would make perfect sense as a thruster delivery system, you know, in outer space. Um, but if you're going to mess up his color scheme, why not mess up his accessory set as well? Because this guy is very obnoxious. <laughs> is all gold with purple highlights. He really looks like a... Uh, Hall of Fame figure that you would hand out to somebody uh, for being like a really good G.I. Joe fan. Doesn't look like <laughs> what you would want to look like in space. I mean, maybe you want to stand out a little bit, but uh, in, case, in case you get lost, in case your propulsion unit doesn't show up on your <laughs> on your weapons tree. But um, I think this figure's paint scheme is bad. The card art for this, based on what I'm looking at, doesn't even feature him on it. It has an Astro Viper fighting one of the Joes on it. That's how embarrassed they are of this, is that they were like, we don't even have a character study to put on this, so let's just move on. The file card for Targat, however, does have a much much stronger breakdown of what is going on with his suit. Targat. If you think skydiving to Earth from a plane is dangerous, try doing it from a Cobra Invader orbiting the moon. Cobra Invader, of course, is the repainted Pogo that's reissued, which I like uh, quite a bit, uh, and is only appropriate that you would put the with the most ridiculous vehicle, you would also put the most obnoxiously colored figure that you have. And you can't fit those Robo guys in a Pogo anyway, so... These terror troopers are deployed into orbit from Cobra Invaders wearing specialized self-contained spacesuits. The suits contain ceramic composite heat shielding armor that provides coolant safely that provides coolant safety during atmospheric reentry. When two or three of them return to Earth at the same time, they are often mistaken for a meteor shower until they start shooting like typical Cobra terrorists. 
They're considered to be formidable battle opponents with exceptional firepower capabilities. So next time you see a meteor shower, it might be a good idea to stand beside a G.I. Joe. Just in case. (laughs) (laughs) Target's blueprints are as follows. The trans-atmospheric anti-implosion spacesuit, which we're all very familiar with. The Target helmet with folding shield. The two thigh-mounted quick-draw pistol holsters. Probably not a lot of bullet fights going on in space. Just throwing that out there. Mega shock gravity field blaster. Don't know what those series of words mean. <laughs> Steel plated gravity boots with Cobra dagger. Okay, I'm on board with that. And then he's got a short burst LL9 laser pistol. That makes sense. Lasers in space. Standard issue Cobra rifle with infrared scope. And a missile launching lunar gun. What do you think a lunar gun? He shoots moons at them? Yep. <laughs> just small, like... Like hey, softball size moon. Somebody fired this missile launcher. It's got a little piece of paper attached to it. Oh, he's mooning me. He got me with the lunar gun. <laughs> All right. I've trashed the figure a lot, Jaron. You're up. Let me hear it. Uh, I disagree with you wholeheartedly. I love this figure. I, of I've, course. You, you say it's obnoxiously covered. I love this color. Give me more bright gold and purple figures. This is one of my favorite color combinations you can make. Um, I think... Them saying, hey, this is like a heat shield, makes sense. That's what I think of when I see that gold color. He's he's jumping from, like that guy with Red Bull. He jumped from way up high and, and landed. And that's what these guys had to do. So they had a heat shield. Um, to me, it makes sense. They justified it, and I love the colors. So I will not hear any derogatory statements towards these guys because they're amazing. Well, you don't have to because I already said them all. So just go back to listen to what I said anytime you want to hear some derogatory comments about this crappy figure. All right, let's go ahead and look at the. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the last figure uh, of our Star Brigade villains line, and that is the 1994 Techno Viper Cobra Battlefield Technician. Uh, this is a V2 Techno Viper. This is the only like pilot driver that came out in, for a Cobra in this set. He comes with a little like. Uh, well, and they call it a power fighter, but it's basically like a big uh, Ellen Ripley from Aliens mech suit. It's got missiles and guns and stuff on it. Uh, we're not going to go too much into that part of it. I really just want to focus on the figures for this special. So let's talk a little bit about Techno Viper V2. Techno Viper V2's paint scheme is... I, I, don't, I hesitate to say it's a huge step backwards from the first Techno Viper, but I do think the Techno Viper V1 is still the the standard for what a Techno Viper should look like. I think if this had come packaged with a Techno Viper V1, it would be an improvement. Um, but nothing about this paint scheme is obnoxious. They were just, they basically just like, we got to mix it up a little bit. Here's some alternate colors. And I don't hate them. Uh, I think they look okay. I think there are definitely worse color schemes out there. Um, but it does make this figure a little less desirable, in my opinion. Because the original Techno Viper is just, he's got it, I mean, he's perfect. He's got a great paint scheme let's see what the old techno vipers did to get drafted for the uh, space for cobra knots codename techno viper battlefield technician modern space battles involve expensive complicated equipment and like most things that are expensive and complicated this equipment tends to break down the job of repairing the high-tech machines belongs to the techno vipers they can repair everything from cobra detonators to ice snakes two vehicles that would not stand a chance in hell in space but their most <laughs> important duty involves the maintenance and operations of cobra power fighter units with this with design plans stolen from gi joe they're really hammered that in the techno vipers helped design the power fighters so naturally they were cobra commander's first choice to drive them full throttle and armed to the max so that's the second reference that cobra stole some design plans from gi joe and made their vehicle off of stuff that they designed i'm not i don't love that i think that cobra is a little bit more intimidating when you see what they produce on their own basically the idea that they were just like oh gi joe's got a great idea this is how we get things like Tiger Force vehicles and Night Force vehicles. Not just a cheap repaint. It's just Cobra constantly stealing their ideas and repainting them to make it theirs. Uh, not a lot of us to say about this figure. He doesn't even come with like an accessory at all. The The power loader thing is, is basically his whole ensemble. Uh, what do you think about the Techno Viper as a... As a add on to the space forces for cobra yeah i think in this this particular instance the figure almost is the accessory really um i think it's interesting to see that the color the the picture uh for the file card and a lot of production and stuff was with that yellow color 
Um, and then the actual production version, the ones that most people have, is that copper color. The purple with the copper color. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's interesting. I like the copper more. Um, I mean, granted, they could have went with bright gold, and I would have liked it even more. But, you know, you win some, you lose some. Um, but I, I like te- Techno Vipers. That, that original color is one of my favorite colors and one of my favorite designs for troop builders. Um so I I would have been okay if they just gave us a repackage of it. Um, you know, I would have... Not like I own one now, but uh, <laughs> I would like to eventually complete the full set of Star Brigade. Okay, so that concludes our look at the 10 enemies of the Star Brigade. And I have to say, as somebody that... I don't pay a, a lot of attention to this line, but I don't uh, dismiss it like many collectors do. Uh, there's some stuff in here that I had either forgotten about or just hadn't dug deep enough to really unearth Jaren. Now that we've kind of looked at a a piece of the puzzle that constitutes how the star brigade universe is supposed to work. What's your overall thought on the feel on, on the designs of these two years. And have you started to create a star brigade universe, essentially like is star brigade bleeding into your Joe verse. And if so, uh, in what ways, so I think for me, um, I absolutely love the story of Star Brigade, the the bits that we do get, the teases and the file card. I think the designs of all of the figures that are using traditional construction, I think are really good. Um, you know, now granted, I wasn't I wasn't really doing anything during this time period. I wasn't collecting Joe during this time period. Heck, I was born the year that these the last figures were being released. So. Um, this was definitely not built towards me, but I can say that if this had come out when I was collecting, you know, when I was a seven, eight, nine year old kid collecting my Star Wars figures, I think I would have really loved these. Um, and I think that the story is something that I would love to see explored um, in the future, you know, and if, if not, that's fine, because I'm... I'm I have begun to like think about how I would tell the story. And I think that's the most important thing that these things can do, at least in my opinion, is challenge you to create a story with them. Um, you know, I want to collect most of most of the figures, if not all, with the exception of I probably won't get those big beefy boys just because <laughs> I don't need them. Um, I'll find another version of a bat or Destro if I need them and push that into the Star Brigade line, um, or even if I need to make a custom or something. But um, I think the Star Brigade universe to me is something that's really, really unique, um, and being traditionally a star wars collector and someone who came from that universe um it's it has the makings of something that could be really cool the lunar ticks um you know the black stars and all those different aspects that kind of give you a bunch of different jumping off points and a bunch of different um intermingling parts i think really really underrated yeah i agree you know i'm a big fan of setting up a piece of the universe and then basically them just having you kind of fill in the blanks, which is a lot of what playing G.I. Joe was like as a kid, is if you got a figure that wasn't in the comic or wasn't in the cartoon, they were basically like, I don't know, here's a paragraph, you fill in the rest. And as a kid, <laughs> as a kid, I think that's really important. I think that the reason that my imagination thrives so much to this day is in a big part because of the way the G.I. Joe toy line operated, because it required me to fill in so much, so much of the blanks or create so much independently story-wise that it wasn't just serving it up for me. They give you some guidelines to show you how they did it, but ultimately every G.I. Joe universe is unique, and that's what makes it so great. I don't want to get into a tirade about that because I could talk for a very long time about the impact G.I. Joe has had on me as an adult and how it helped me develop. Um, but instead I'll just say I like Star Brigade. I think Star Brigade has a lot of potential. I would have liked to have seen uh, the future of Star Brigade, how it would have developed and seen how they fleshed out that universe. Maybe they could have made it work. There's a lot of crazy ideas going on there, but it's not that unrealistic. I mean, they could have, you can tone it down a little bit and it would be a believable, you know, space force. Um, I'd like to, we'll come back and revisit this a later day. Well, I'd like to talk about the Joes and star brigade. We have a little bit more time to talk at leisure. I would like to maybe flesh out how I think the, the GI Joe galaxy works. Um, because I think that's a pretty interesting 
part of the G.I. Joe universe that is rarely talked about or explored. And it also, we will come back at some point, maybe during one of our regular episodes, and I'd like to talk to you about the uh, Manimals. KB Toys put out three of the canceled figures with a slight, slight repaint, and they are substantially different than the aliens we just looked at. They are literal, like, borderline Transformers. They've got all kinds of crazy stuff going on. There was some unproduced sample stuff that was supposed to lead on after that. There were supposed to be six total manimals and three of them got a like a later release and then the other three were supposed to get that same release and the first three did so poorly they didn't do the other three but that was we have uh thanks to all the great archivists out there we have great shots of painted samples lots of stuff you know they were they were fairly far into the line when they when it uh, got canceled so we'll uh, we'll sit down and look at some of those sometime just have a, a star brigade themed episode we'll fill in all the gaps that we did cover here and we would love it if you would join us for that. If you are a Star Brigade enthusiast or you have a Star Brigade universe in your Joeverse, leave us a comment and tell us how it works because I'm very interested in how people use Star Brigade in their universe, especially the aliens versus the Cobras, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you don't want to leave a comment on YouTube or you're listening to the audio only version of this, you can send us an email at anythingjoespod at gmail.com. You can talk to me directly on Twitter through Anything Joe's Pod, or you can talk to Jaron on our Instagram at Anything Joe's Pod. You can also find our Facebook group on Anything Joe's Pod. And lastly, you can find our YouTube channel, and that's just Anything Joe's. That was the one we locked down. We did a good job. Um, thanks so much to Hoodie Cobra Commander for having us. Uh, we uh, love the Cobra Convergence events, and we always look forward to participating on it. We're... We feel very privileged that we, you know, the invite was extended for us to have a day all to our own. And we hope those of you that tuned in and joined us uh, had a good time with us as well. And we hope you'll join us again in just two short weeks where anything's available for discussion here on Anything Joe's. <laughs>